Hello and welcome to Sea of Nerves, the podcast that helps you navigate life's storms and to develop practices to support your own worthiness and love. Are you ready to embark on this healing journey together? Throughout this podcast, we'll explore the challenges and triumphs of coping with grief and trauma and we'll provide you with tools and practices to help you navigate the rough seas of life. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm kind of going through like a colder sinus congestion, so I apologize. I'm a little stuffy. So as we embark on this journey together, I invite you to imagine a sea of nerves within you. Vast powerful force that allows you to be yourself and to navigate any storm that comes your way. Throughout this podcast, we'll explore how to tap into that sea of nerves and unleash your full potential, even in the face of adversity. Let's grab that life jacket and let's set sail. Together, we'll discover the strength and resilience within you and chart a course towards healing and growth. Welcome, I'm your host, Darian. And in today's episode, we're gonna talk about a powerful tool for coping with grief and trauma, negotiating. But before we dive into this topic, let's take a moment to center ourselves, shall we? And we'll do this with a quick breathing exercise. So go ahead and close your eyes, feels right for you, and take in a deep breath. Hold your breath for a moment and slowly release it. Ah! Letting go of any tension or stress you may be holding on to. Take a few more deep breaths in and out, feeling that oxygen flow into your body And as you exhale slowly, feeling a sense of calm wash over you. Now that we're centered and focused, let's explore how negotiating can be a useful tool for navigating the stormy seas of grief and trauma. So in last week's episode, we covered our base of negotiating with grief, which for some of us, is a stage that we can get stuck on, repeating the same opera and cry for help that we've done so many times in the past. However, we had learned that these patterns and behaviors are fixable and also vital when coping with the many stages of grief. I know I can get uh, caught up negotiating with life myself. I can tell myself realities that just aren't even true but when it helps fit fit the circumstance of our fear it feels right right (laughs) it helps fits the mold of that fear and we want to believe that's the truth the only problem is being stuck in this phase of grief if we don't recognize it it could go on for years and we might not even know it and especially when you have to navigate life's storms on your own. If you feel that this might resonate with you, I'd recommend pausing this episode and click the previous one, Navigating the Waves of Negotiating, as it'll really help offer insight to help get you to this phase of grief, which is our topic today. Negotiating! And so if you need a moment, please do so. But negotiating is similar to the sea. Excuse me. And life can be unpredictable, throwing us into deep waters when we least expect it. I mean, I feel like it definitely comes when you least expect it. And when you face that loss of a loved one or a significant change in, in your life, in our lives, we 
can often feel left feeling so lost and overwhelmed, struggling just to keep our heads above water. And just like the sea, grief is a natural process that has ebbs and flows, taking us through different stages and <laughs> most likely emotions, because that's what comes with it. Especially when we negat, <laughs> when we not negat, navigate. <laughs> no, I just want to say that. Negat. <laughs> emotions can be tricky when we're navigating <laughs> the waves of our feelings. And it just goes to show you leave perfection behind. I mean, I can't tell you how much that has helped me in my own grieving process. Just right there. I could have probably spent time redoing that. I'm not going to. Why? This is who I am. I mess up. We make mistakes. We're humans. And that's exactly what we'll dive into in this episode of Sea and Herbs. We'll explore how negotiating the stages of grief are similar to the sea. And by learning to ride these waves and accepting the phase in person in which we are in this current moment, we can find inner love and that worthiness and peace that we deserve in the midst of life's storms. So how do we understand this grief we're going through, right? <clears throat> and it's essential because it helps make sense of these intense, like these intense emotions that you may be experiencing or maybe even reacting to. And when we experiencing or <laughs> when we experience that we, especially when we lose something or someone that's especially important to us, it's a natural response to loss. It's, it's, it's natural to feel this intense emotions from happy to sad to, you know, joy to depression to uh, just, to, like I said, the rough waves. I mean, it's, I love the sea analogy for this reason because you can imagine how, you know, they can get to 200 and some feet high and that's crazy impressive and then just drop down i mean that's our emotions right they can get crazy high if we want them to and they're going to drop down when we allow them to as well we have that control we do and that's where when understanding grief and knowing this is a natural response to that loss especially throughout the whole entire process of grief, right? That includes all of the different stages, including denial and anger and bargaining and depression and acceptance, which we haven't gotten to yet, and we will in, um, in upcoming episodes. So understanding and acknowledging these stages, we can begin to accept the reality of this loss and or many losses, as I've discussed in episodes before. And find new waves to move, new, now new waves, new waves to move forward. <laughs> new ways to move forward, to ride the waves with grace and ease. Let's see what I did there. Haha, <laughs> transitioned it, made it work. Mistake, not in my world. It's my world. Thank you, Bob Ross. <laughs> If you don't watch Bob Ross paintings, you really are missing out. I promise you, it's really worth it. <laughs> I just have to note on that. <laughs> so, going back to grief. This is where grief is amazing. And maybe if you're dealing with something really heavy at the moment, you could be you could be sitting there and laughing and be like, Oh yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm struggling underwater and you're telling me this feels amazing. Okay, there I am couldn't be more than a lie but actually it really is and even if you are struggling underwater or do feel like that there will be a time you'll resurface and you'll find that grief leads to growth and healing and in the meantime let yourself sink underwater do it let yourself sink let yourself feel everything let yourself surround it don't struggle for air don't struggle to come up let yourself feel it I know that sounds really scary, 
Um, but, and it's probably going to feel scary. I know for myself it did. Um, I, I ended up picturing myself like floating all the way to the bottom of the ocean. And like, for me, that's just like really <laughs> scary to think about even like now. But it's also kind of relieving because I also know when I resurfaced, I felt like a new person. I felt like a goddess walking out of water. And that's why I said it can be really amazing. And I feel like healing is always on the other side of grief anyway. We really need it to feel healed into another being or surface that is the inner true being of ourselves. It's also why I like to reference survival shows, and especially if you watch watch them or read about them in books or have read about one. You know, they always come out of the experience if they're alive <laughs> to talk about it, of course. Um, you know, they always talk about, I feel like at the end, the pattern is that most of them always have a deeper sense of life and they're ready to live life more deeply and not waste a second more of their time. And I hope that's what this podcast is bringing to you right here, right now. It's to just show you that your life is precious. You're, you don't need to go through some crazy surf. I mean, like, life is a survival show, right? <laughs> I mean, when you want to look at it that way, is kind of how I look at it. I mean, every time we're going to come out of the brink and be like, oh my god, I can't believe I survived that. And yeah, I may not be crazy enough to end up on a TV show because it's not oh my god, I went through a swam through jellyfish, swam through shark, got stranded for three days in the middle of the ocean and made it. I mean, yeah, that that's a visible story, right? But there's some deep, dark stories that people um, have to experience that are <laughs> way worse than that, and they come out and go, why well, can't believe I survived that? So it's, I hope you keep that in mind, you know? You've survived a lot and have come already this far. And even though grief is a painful and challenging experience, it, it can give that opportunity for us to really reflect on our lives, our relationships, our values. The process of grieving can really help us gain that new perspective we might need on life to deepen anything in the wheel of life that is your life and to develop greater empathy and compassion towards others, ultimately. And that's what we can learn through grief, to appreciate life more fully, find meaning and purpose in each experience. And additionally, understanding grief can help us better support and empathize with others who may be going through a similar experience. It allows us to be patient and compassionate and to allow that understanding of their emotions and reactions to let them know that they're validated and that they're heard and that the importance of grief is the potential for growth and healing and that navigating through this difficult process together will only develop more resilience deeper strength and love and with this within you, I hope you can gain more perspective on yourself and gain courage to be yourself because you are a true vibrant essence that is you. And you make everyone around you shine so much brighter. I hope you can pause this podcast for a second and give yourself the much needed congratulations. I know you may have felt this experience just one time in your life <clears throat> even if it may have been short lived I, I think there's one time in your life that you can go oh my gosh I, I had the courage to be myself and because I was I inspired others maybe it was just wearing an outfit that you felt super stylish in or doing your makeup a different way or getting out of your comfort zone and then someone complimented that and you never know that might have inspired someone to be themselves that's the beauty of life is you just never know when you're the essence of you you're gonna make everyone else around you shine so bright and i hope just 
write it down or <laughs> make with peace with it because shining the briny or the briny <laughs> the brilliant stardust being of a human that you are it will not only continue to make you show up vibrant but as i said it'll continue to do others to do the same and can you imagine vibrancy with vibrancy instead of competition versus competition Ugh. i mean we'd be able to accept how we each are badasses and you are a badass because you're here listening to this podcast today and i know i know you are i know you're a badass because anyone who's trying to better themselves is and anyone who's trying to better themselves to better those around you the child's play you're a badass don't even talk to me about it <laughs> though i know that's <laughs> can be easier said right now and heard and sometimes when we're in that dark moment it can be hard to apply because i know a lot of us can get inside our heads and battle it out as in my favorite lyric goes being thoughts in my head hands turning purple and I don't even know who I'm boxing against. Hope that was good enough for a record label. Just kidding. I stole that. I don't remember who sings that. <laughs> I'm a rapper in my secret life. Just so you all know. <laughs> and that is true. <laughs> in my head, I pretend I'm a very good rapper, but I'm not. <laughs> so anyway, going back to what we were talking about. Not about how I have a secret rapping career. <laughs> it can be easy to fall into our shame modes, right? And go, well, I did this wrong. I, I could have done this. I should have done this. This is why I should have been a rapper. Just kidding. <laughs> I just had to throw that away. Or I like to think of it as like Spider-Man, like the like sticky glue part of grief, like Venom and Spider-Man when he's like trying to pull it off, you know? It's like all sticking and like, and on its hand and like on its skin and like it's growing that's also how i like to picture it and it just takes over a unique mindset and if you continue to feed it it's going to continue to grow but if you like really strengthen your mindset it can lead to re a really like deep and personal experience and that's the thing too is that everyone experiences this differently there's no right or wrong way to grieve. And it's essential to recognize that everyone's journey through grief will be unique. Some people may express their emotions more openly, while others may prefer to grieve totally private. And <clears throat> some may find comfort in talking to others about their feelings. And if you're like me, <laughs> we may prefer to go into a dark room and process our emotions alone either way the length of time that anyone experiences grief can vary i mean some people can experience a really short time and period of intense grief while others it takes a lot longer to heal and that's okay yet if you're not at healing just affirm with yourself that hey i'm not there yet and it's okay. I will be there at some point in time, but I'm not there now. And it's okay. And it's important to acknowledge that no one's correct in how to grieve. Even even advice or resources I'm giving you are it's just that I'm just giving you resources. How you want to handle it and grieve is up to you. I don't have the correct way. You're you are only gonna have the correct way that's right for you. And your experience is valid. And we each have our own journey of our own. And I think that's just where it's essential to respect and support each other. Especially because we each have the unique way of processing and coping with any kind of loss. And I can tell you my grieving process is definitely nonlinear paradox of unsettlement at best and I'm still accepting what I have in this moment by telling myself kindly and compassionately that 
I deserve so much more. I deserve so much more because I do. And it doesn't make me a bad or evil person for wanting more. And it's okay to laugh and to joke, to cry until your head feels like an amphitheater, especially when you're in this process. And this is one of the parts that really got to me. I felt like a bad person. I felt guilty so regularly as I was trying to cope. I was having a good time while dealing with so many burdens at the same time and it was intense and confusing and I wanted to rip all my hairs out. And it was burdens that made my soul and heart just feel heavy and dirty and I just couldn't and I wouldn't. I just, I, I didn't want to face it. And for so long. However, and it's why I preach finding and seeking professionals like counselors and therapists because all of the ones I've had have saved my life. And if you live here in Colorado, I can recommend you to so many. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you are in need of some amazing assistance. I got your back. And if you're not in state, I would recommend setting that intention of finding a therapist. And that's it. Don't try to force out of desperation just because most likely you won't like find the correct one or it'll make you hate the experience in general. I definitely have known people who've had that experience. And I can tell you from my own, as I just, I stated out loud, I'm going to get therapy and I'm going to find the best therapist that fits my needs at this time in my life. And I'm asking for your trust here. And almost a week's time, I kid you not, and not a hair longer, a therapist always finds me through some kind of weird connection. And that's why they always say, don't chase, attract. I am not kidding you guys. This shit works. It works. And it's also why I liked the glitter reference from last week's episode, because the faster you accept that you will run into the side of yourself again, the side that feels sad, afraid, lonely, ready to run back into the forest. That is the past. If you learn to accept this, you'll learn to love fear. Because fear shows you're out of the cage. You're alive. You're running. You're ready for life. And I started this podcast for this reason. For the intent to help others work through this phase of life, of this grieving, because doing it alone, especially by personal experience, I can tell you, it freaking sucked. And and I say alone as in my own head. You know, I'm, I'm the one who processes my emotions alone. I did have people to lean on. I had a few friends, my husband. However, if you're like me and you like to take life on by yourself because you feel you can't trust others from so many years of abandonment and trauma and you feel alone when you work through this grief, it sucks. It does, and no one talks about it. It sucks. So I do hope this is a gentle reminder that I'm here for you. You don't have to navigate these waters alone. Not anymore. I also want to note the importance of self-compassion and self-forgiveness during this grieving process. It's so important to try to talk to yourself with kindness like you would a child or a dear friend. It's hard to rewrite behaviors. It's really hard, but affirmations really do work. I use the one personally. This is my favorite and feel free to use it. Feel free to steal it. Oh, sorry. Hit my podcast thing. <laughs> sorry if that was loud. Um, I talk with my hands. Go figure. Of course, I'm going to hit everything in the room. I'm surprised I haven't tipped my water over yet. <laughs> but feel free to steal this and make this your own, this affirmation that I'm about to tell you. Okay. This is what I like to tell myself. I am rewriting old behaviors, and when they arise, I will thank them and say, Hey, thanks for showing up. I know you used to protect me back in the day. However, I no, no, I no longer need you. I, know no, I no longer need to shame myself or talk so harshly. I have an inner child to protect, and she deserves so much more than this. And with that, it brings a smile to me every single time. I also took a tip. I can't remember who gave me this. Um, 
It was to go through your childhood photos and find one that makes you the happiest or feels like the most happiest version of you and that the version of you that you want to show up for as today. Ever since I did that, I have been able to look at that photo and go, why would I want an adult, even myself, to treat or talk to myself? My sweet little baby self like that. Why would I want that? And sure enough, like I said, I found myself smiling like I am now and rewriting my talk going, I'm powerful. You know what? I'm capable. I'm worthy. I want to show up for her because I am enough. I am enough right now as I am and I'm going to go get life. And I hope you can tell yourself the same thing because you deserve the same thing. And as I said, you're going to still find lots of glitter grief laying around. But that doesn't mean these practices and techniques don't work. In fact, it gave me my time back. Time I spent worrying and freaking out, playing victim to my circumstances, which I'd spent hours easily doing, to now, promise you, promise you, it takes me mere minutes, minutes. And that's what these practices, even though they take time, that they do. And it takes time. Like I said, it's taken me about two years to keep these practices to, to like make them work to get that down to minutes, right? So it took, took a long time to slowly watch it go to minutes. So just as a gentle reminder, go at your pace. Your life is so precious. This journey of yours is so precious. There's no need to rush it. No need to rush it. So, I hope you join me in our next episode as we will share strategies. Ooh, share strategies. Just had to say it again because it sounded really hard for my tongue for a second. For moving forward. (laughs) I always have a hard time picking up in sentences after I do that. (laughs) Anyway, focus Darian is back. My ADHD kicking in, but... (laughs) Join me next week as we have strategies for you for moving forward after experiencing grief or during experiencing grief, such as things as maybe finding new hobbies, interests, uh, volunteering, creating new goals, techniques like I have to rewrite behaviors, and new goals especially that fit you, the person you are right now, not the person you used to be, but who, who you are right now, grief and all. And please remember to be gentle with yourself. No healing is possible with time and support. As we come to the end of this episode of Sea of Nerves, I hope we've, I hope that you've gained, well, we've, I've gained an, a valuable insight, that's for sure. As I've always said, this always helps my grieving process when talking about it. And I set that intention to hopefully help one person go through the grieving process, but Yes, we or you've (laughs) gained valuable insight into negotiating the stages of grief and finding that inner love and peace that you really deserve. Remember, it's a it's a grief is a natural process, and we're all going to experience it differently. But it's also a journey that can lead to growth, healing, and ultimately finding a deeper appreciation for life. By tuning into Sea of Nerves, you're taking the first step towards understanding and navigating through this tricky thing of life called grief, whether it's for yourself or someone else. We hope that you will continue to listen and engage with our podcast as we explore other topics related to our mental health and well-being. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. There's always someone who cares and wants to support you. Hey, it's me right here. And we're going to keep riding the waves of grief. And eventually, you'll find your way to the shore of inner love and peace. Thank you for listening, guys. And we'll see you in next week's episode of Sea of Nerves.